Well, welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs, the Conscious Business Show, where we look at connecting the heart, the mind, to the wallet. And we're talking to a wonderful business leader, Matthew Manos. He's founder and managing director of Very Nice, and he's actually joining us today from Los Angeles. Uh, He's been described as a neo-philanthropist. Uh, He's obviously a young entrepreneur and has been working with organizations such as Google, UNICEF, NASA, uh, the American Heart Association. Uh, They've done some wonderful activities in in raising funds across the globe and working with well over 450 organizations. So we're just really excited that Matthew's with us today to share his story and his journey. Um, He's been quoted in the Huffington Post and Forbes uh, Wired Magazine, The Guardian, so he's he's got some great press, and so we're really excited he's here to talk to us about his journey. So, Matthew, welcome, and, and if you could, let's start our dialogue to understand how you got to this point in your life, what has been your journey, why you started Very Nice, and, and really cloak it in, in talking to us about this whole movement in social enterprise and social entrepreneurialism, which I think you really bestow a lot of that. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be on the show and to share some of these stories, et cetera. So thanks again. Um, my own story, you know, it's a little bit interesting. It started actually back when I was 16 years old. And back then I was a competitive skateboarder. So you could actually find me in skate parks all across the Bay Area. I grew up in the Silicon Valley, um, kind of close to Palo Alto. And there was one, you know, trip to the skate park that ended up really changing the course of my my career or my non-existent career at that point and in figuring out what it was I wanted to do. Um, I had actually met the founder of a nonprofit organization at the skate park and became so inspired by his story that I knew, you know, this is the kind of people I want to work with. These are the kind of people I want to support. I want to do what I can to give back to them, et cetera. Hmm. And right around that time, I had actually just gotten my first copy of uh, Photoshop and was starting to teach myself things here and there, kind of silly things like changing the color of my hair or (laughs) making my (laughs) eyes really big or anything like that. And, you know, thought, wouldn't it be interesting to donate uh, my time to to support this organization through these design skills? And Hmm. That ultimately became my first pro bono project. And then after a few years of doing different ad hoc pro bono projects here and there um, around the UCLA campus where I went to undergrad, et cetera, I decided it was time to put a name to it all and ultimately wanted to be a design studio that was very nice. And so the name kind of stuck, and that's where we are right now. Talk to us a little bit about you know, educating them into your philosophy and your, and, and your vision, but also the purpose of the organization. Uh, it, it aligns so much to the conscious capitalism principles. Um, obviously, as, you know, co-founder and chairperson of the Boston chapter and working with the global organization, you know, really understanding the intersection of businesses, both, yes, having to generate a profit, but also a purpose. And, and so just the name of your company evokes that. And then working with your clients, I mean, how do you infiltrate this in your day-to-day work with clients? And what impact do you see happen across these organizations? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. You know, what, what kind of happened sort of by accident shortly after that day at the skate park when this started to really grow and evolve into an actual business is we essentially accidentally became one of the first social enterprises in the design industry. So Mm -hmm. the design industry really has not been a big participant in social entrepreneurship, social enterprise models, et cetera. And stumbling upon this model that we have where we actually give half of our work away for free to nonprofit organizations, we were able to really integrate giving and that kind of ethos into what we do every day. So at any given moment with our model, we are dedicating half of our efforts towards projects that are making some kind of impact in the world. And that really was inspired by this realization that organizations in the U.S. alone are actually spending upwards of $8 billion a year on design and marketing services. Mm. And learning about that number and working with our clients directly 
we've realized that that really is a big uh, hurdle when it comes to them trying to make their impact, making ends meet first. Right. And so through pro bono service, we're actually really able to uh, make their lives a bit easier so that they can focus more on their pro bono. And this is what really drives us every day. You, you brought up, you know, the education process and actually what kind of interesting about that word in general and being, you know, kind of a pioneer in this industry and integrating impact into what we do is that education was actually my biggest hurdle uh, mm. because this was a very weird idea <laughs> when, <laughs> when we were first launching. Yeah. There weren't really gold standards out there to point to. It just was something I honestly believed in. And, and luckily, you know, tracking the impact of our clients and of, of us over the years has helped us to kind of refine that message and and show that we're actually not crazy but this is actually you know something that works 